I guess that I was intrigued by quantum mechanics itself and in trying to understand what it said as a theory, I, you know, I was led into foundations of quantum mechanics simply because this is one of these foundational questions, foundations of quantum mechanics, where actually understanding the foundations is really not understanding foundations, it's understanding the theory itself. I, as someone interested in physics and really intrigued by fundamental physics, that is the most basic kind of physics, which quantum, mecha quantum mechanics is supposed to be very basic physics. And I'm, I'm talking about when I was a, you know, a, st a student, high school, college, I simply wanted to understand quantum mechanics. And uh, to me, that really is, amounts to understanding what is now called foundations of quantum mechanics. That's a, that's a tricky question. I mean, is the question, um, what version do I prefer? Or how, what do I think that the name quantum theory has come to mean? I, 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 let me answer the question, this question, the, what version of quantum mechanics do I prefer? I mean, I prefer, I certainly prefer the Bohmian version or more generally, a version of quantum mechanics where you have a clear statement and a clear understanding of what's going on in the theory. And a crucial part of being able to understand what's going on is understanding what the basic ontology of the theory is, what the theory is fundamentally about, what the basic variables of the theory describe, what's real in the theory and what isn't what the beables of the theory are. A, a theory which has clear beables behaving in a sensible way out of which you can understand um, the facts of our experience of the world would be a, a theory, a version of quantum theory worth considering. And um, so far as I know, the cleanest and cl simplest example of such a theory is Bohmian mechanics. Hmm. Yeah, that's a complicated thing too. It is often claimed that with quantum mechanics, we're dealing with, a, we have a theory which involves inescapable, unavoidable, irreducible randomness. And of course, the no hidden variable theorems were, particularly von Neumann, was famously um, known as someone who has shown that any return to determinism is impossible. Now, we know that isn't true, that it, it is possible to have a deterministic version of quantum mechanics. Uh, Bohmian mechanics is a deterministic version. And the surprising thing about that is you would, th you would have thought at the very least that at least it would be hard to have a deterministic version of quantum mechanics. So you have to work hard to overcome the limitations that somehow suggested by von Neumann's and other no hidden von Neumann's and other no hidden variables theorems, you would not have expected that something that could be argued to be the simplest version of quantum mechanics would just turn out to be deterministic. And I do, I do think that's the situation. That's the situation we're in with Bohmian mechanics, and I think it's quite striking. At the same time, with Bohmian mechanics. It turns out there's a sense in which one does have some sort of inescapable randomness in quantum mechanics. Not in the dynamics, but in the, but arising from the fact, which can be shown, that for a typical, in a typical Bohmian universe, there are sharp limitations to what we can know, limitations which are accurately described by the usual quantum probabilities. So that a Bohmian universe is a universe which is demonst demonstrably involved quantum randomness, even though it seems like, and in a sense, it doesn't. So it's a bit paradoxical, but it's, there's no real paradox here. It's simply 
a question of being clear about what you mean by a theory involving randomness. In one sense, there's no randomness at all, but in, one, in another sense, the a Bohmian world will be a world which it, it's, it, in which randomness appears to be playing an essential role. The natural implication is that if, if Bell's inequalities are satisfied, the, the implication is that our world is, involves non-locality, something like spooky action at a distance, non-local distant connections which are not explained in local terms, mm, connections which are superluminal, are transmitted somehow faster than the speed of light. Um, it seems to me the only, Bell's theorem covers all of what I would call normal versions of quantum mechanics where measurements have outcomes in the usual sense of the word. A pointer ends up pointing in a different direction. Um, you get a definite result of some sort or another. Not just an appearance of a definite result, you've de there is a definite result. That's what I would call normal physics and normal quantum mechanics. In, normal, in, a, in, a, in normal quantum mechanics, in a normal quantum mechanical world, a normal quantum mechanical world is in a world which involves non-locality. Now, in a many worlds version of quantum mechanics, which I, the language I'm using, it would not be a normal quantum mechanical world because measurements, strictly speaking, don't have results in a many worlds version. Uh, there, Bell's theorem does not apply, and I think um, the jury is out on whether or not a many worlds version of quantum mechanics could be completely local. I'm actually dubious of that as well, but if it is, I think a many worlds version of quantum mechanics is probably going to be non-local as well, but I don't think it would be easy to draw that conclusion on the basis of Bell's analysis, which, which as I said, applies only to a norm, normal quantum physics where measurements have outcomes, single outcomes. Well, there's a sense in which um, there is a, philosophy and physics cannot be separated. Physics is concerned with the nature of reality, physical reality. Philosophy is concerned with reality in general, but a part of philosophy is certainly concerned with physical reality, the most fundamental and basic kinds of questions about physical reality. There should be no sharp boundary between physics and philosophy. Now, it, it somehow has happened that in many of the last decades, three, four, five, six, seven decades, physicists have turned away from being concerned about what they properly should be concerned about, the nature of physical reality as such, and at least many have, and have left it up to philosophers to worry about what the reality is, what reality is described by quantum mechanics. It's not that the philosophers should have been the people primarily doing that. I think physicists should primarily have been doing that. But the fact, I would, therefore I would say the fact that it's so it seems to be more, philosopher, more philosophers than physicists who are concerned with such a question points to um, the, the fact that we're dealing with a somewhat pathological situation when it comes to quantum physics. Pathological sociology, I think the pathology is obviously, I think it's in the, among the physics community. Well, that, that let me interpret that question. Um, I would say uh, w what I find is the most difficult point to appreciate in foundations of quantum mechanics, though I think it's a simple point, is what sort of is the meaning of an adequate ontology for the theory? There's first of all the problem of convincing physicists that 
the notion of ontology is even relevant to physics. It, physics is about reality, uh, the basic constituents taken seriously of our world, the, base, the most elementary uh, ingredients of us and everything around us. So one struggle is to get physicists to appreciate that ontology matters. But even many who have appreciated that they need ontology seem not to have a good appreciation of what an adequate ontology even means. I have in mind, um, for example, pointing to objects of, at a level of abstraction where it's hard to see how such objects so far removed from what we would take to be a concrete reality in space and time, how such objects at such a level of abstraction could be actually used to extract predictions about things taking place in space and time. Now on a more practical and more, on a, on a totally different level, I would say a, the big, a big issue in foundations of quantum mechanics is how to come up, how to reconcile quantum non-locality with relativity. Relativity is, is widely regarded as being at great tension with non-locality, but we know a quantum world is a non-local world. What to do about that tension is a big question.